Hello guys and welcome back to my class. Today we'll be talking about wireless penetration testing and how it's important in today's world. So I got a picture here as you can see here. There's an access point and there's clients. So clients are the devices that connect to access points. So a client could be, you know, your laptop, obviously, as you see here, a cell phone, a smart device like a camera, uh, you know, smart television. I've, t I've seen things like smart refrigerators, smart laundry uh, machines, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the way that these machines communicate is that they communicate via an encrypted method. So for you to co for you to connect to the router, you have to know the pass key or the password. And the passwords are very important. And the passwords are honestly is the reason why hacking into routers is could be near impossible. I mean, it, obviously, if your password is something as simple as one, two, three, four, five, you know, then brute forcing the password is going to be relatively easy. But if you make it something where it's maybe what 12 characters long, it includes, you know, maybe an X symbol, you know, it, a bunch of numbers, capital letters, small letters, et cetera, et cetera. So it's super important. So let me explain how a four-way handshake or the handshake between the client and the and the access point access point is right. So when you turn on the Wi-Fi on your on your on your tablet, it automatically looks to connect to a router or any or any broadcast that it's familiar with. And if the access router is nearby, it'll connect to it automatically. Once the router uh, checks the encrypted handshake and it matches the built-in password then that's when the uh, the the uh, the client is allowed access so with Kali Linux what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to capture the handshake and then brute force it with a password list right so Kali Linux comes with a bunch of tools that are already pre-built in right we're gonna use this right now so uh let me get our command line out right now real quick all right so i already set up a wireless router that's purposely vulnerable and by purposely vulnerable i mean that the password is weak so we're gonna run a tool called arrow well actually before we do that we want to make sure we have our wireless adapters plugged in and working good so WLAN 0 is my my built-in adapter, and then WLAN 1 right here is an external antenna Wi-Fi adapter that I have. So as you can see, I'm connected with my Wi-Fi with my internal uh, adapter to the hot to the hotspot we're gonna try to break into. So Wi-Fi hotspot, right? So we're gonna put WLAN 0 1 into monitor mode using Airmon. NG again this tool is already built into Kali Linux so you can easily use it as you can see we're in monitor mode right here monitor mode and labeled for our external Wi-Fi adapter so now we're gonna run arrow dump NG and then use our interface which is WLAN 1 so as you can see, we're reading a bunch of nearby uh, access points. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller so we make more room. So our target here is the one that I set up on purpose, which is Wi-Fi hotspot. As you can see here, beacons tells us how close the device is and how strong the signal is, right? So I'm obviously next to the, uh, the vulnerable hotspot. So as you can see, the beacons are are high and another thing that's important is the data so this actually tells us if there's any nearby device communicating with our router and that's important so i have two devices currently connected to our router right so again we're going to try to capture the handshake after we do a, a, the authentication attack so right now what we want to do is we want to capture the mac the device's mac address or bssid as it's known here this is very important, right? And another important thing to know is the the channel. So this is channel six, right? So it's broadcasting on channel six. 
I believe they broadcast from 1 through 11, if I'm not mistaken. So now we're going to run Aero Dump again. But this time we're going to give it more flags. So channel. Again, we're going to go back to it again. It was channel 6, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, channel 6. And then the MAC address, as you can see here. So we already have both. And this time we're going to add a right flag. So this is going to be our file. Or if I believe it's a .cap file. So that's going to host our capture handshake once we capture it. So again, you could you can be more specific. You want if you want to save it somewhere like a downloads file or your desktop downloads downloads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? It's it'll be longer if you if you save it to a specific spot. But I'm just gonna save it to the default one, which I believe it's my home folder. So let's run it. All right. So now we're capturing. This is good. This is good, right? Again, beacons, data through the roof, the type of encryption, WPA2, the cipher CCMP, the name of our router right here, devices communicating with the writer. So, the, again, this could be a computer. This could be a cell phone, et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm opening up another command line uh, tool, and I'm going to show you how to use AirPlay, which will be the, the authentication attack. So... Let's get this open up. All right, so on this one, it'll be AirPlay, as you can see it, and the deauthentication flag, and it'll send it three packets. And then it, this is the flag to ask for the Mac for the Mac address, right? Obviously, this isn't the right one, so we're gonna do this again. I copied it. WLAN zero. And we are going to do the attack. All right. The downside about this sort of attack is that sometimes you got to keep doing this, stuff, the authentication attack, because it, it takes a while to capture the, the handshake. So let's check our, oh, we captured the handshake. No need for that. As you can see up here, we captured the handshake. So now we're going to run a tool that's going to try to decrypt the captured handshake. So uh, let's do that. But but before we start cracking the pass, the uh, the encrypted password, I want to explain something to you guys real quick. I actually even have notes of it, too. Let me see. All right, here we go. All right, here. So, th so uh, just, to, just to explain what stored passwords in hash form are, right? As you can see here, this is a perfect example of why encrypted or encrypting information is super important and it makes it harder for hackers, right? So this here is a plain text password. This here is a plain text password. This down here is the hash version of it or the encrypted version of it, right? So if I ran this in the, in the Linux command line, this here will be the output. So if you encrypt this into this, this is much harder to guess if you were to hack into a computer. That's why a lot of computers keep their passwords in a file that's encrypted, that, that looks something like this. As you can see, SHA-246 hash is even no longer hash uh, hash password file. So as you can see here, our plain text word, and here is our encrypted version of it, right? So it's the same idea with the, with the, with the Wi-Fi passwords. So the Wi-Fi password is encrypted, look like this. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna use a brute forcing tool, Aircrack, that's going to run a password list with a bunch of passwords inside, and it's going to use an algorithm to test to, uh, to what do you call it, that's going to encrypt the, the plain text passwords into something like this, and then it's going to run the encrypted, what, the encrypted output and then test it against the handshake to see if, if, if it matches. If it matches, it'll let us know. So let's go back to our other command line and I'm going to show you how to run Aircrack. 
All right, so air crack, as you see here, air crack is our password cracking tool, brute force cracking tool, whatever you want to call it. And this is our, our word flag. So now we're trying to get a the, the a password list. And for this experiment, I put 10 on this one, right? And then I'm going to obviously run it against the capture handshake. So let's run it. As you can see, I found the password. Like, there was 10 passwords on that file, but I ended up putting the right one there. As you can see, password. So the whole point of this video is that encrypting, having a good, strong encrypted password is important. If you can make it 15 characters long without forgetting, you should do that. You know, try to make it unique enough where only you know the password and you don't forget it. Because passwords are important, you know? Because if a hacker hacks into a database and let's just say they have access to the to the uh, password file, because there's, there's a folder that, that houses these passwords, and, you know what I mean? And uh, if, they're kept, if they're kept in an encrypted manner, that's a good thing. And especially if the passwords are very complicated. So uh, uh, a hacker won't be able to run a brute forcing tool like this. To break into it all right guys well thanks for watching my uh video don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe thank you